Hi there, I'm Matthew Lee, Senior and Founding Pastor of Christ's Heartbeat Ministries International, and welcome to this year's special edition love message that we release every year on Valentine's Day. If you haven't seen our previous two messages, Reckless Love and Love the Good, the Bad and the Ugly, from the last two years, I'd like to encourage you to go and check those out. Family, the title for today's message is Loveless Generation, and I've had a couple of people ask me, what is the loveless generation? Who is the loveless generation? And family, I can say this about the loveless generation. It is the world around us. We live in a day and age where everything is becoming more about me, 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 I, 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 I. Everyone in the world around us is becoming more self-centered, more self-focused, and more self-entitled. And that is not how things are meant to be, family. This is the loveless generation. Take a look at how the people around us drive. Do they drive in a manner that's considerate to others or do they drive in a manner that's selfish for themselves to get where they want to as quickly as they can irrespective of how other people do it. Take a look at how businesses are run these days. That it's all about me, 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 I, I, I. It's all about my profits and it's no longer about taking into consideration how the customer feels and how the customer cares. And a brilliant example for us in South Africa, take a look at how government is run and, you know, things like load shedding and stuff like that. Take a look at how these are run. All the um, embezzlement and all the fraud that's happening and all the people that are taking the money for themselves and not giving the money back to the community. Family, this is the selfish world that we live in. Look at the countless lawsuits that are in court at the moment because of people's selfish desires and not getting what they want the way they want to. Look at the broken marriages and the divorce rate that we are experiencing at the moment just because people in marriage aren't getting what out of marriage what they expected that they were going to get out of marriage because they are not happy with how their partner treats them or whatever. And I'm not obviously con condoning abusive relationships, but people get divorced over silly little things these days because of selfish reason and selfish ambition. And that is the loveless generation. We live in a selfish society, in a loveless generation. And why does selfish mean that we are loveless? Family, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, that love is, isn't selfish. It doesn't demand its own way. Therefore, whenever we act selfish, we aren't walking in love. We are, in fact, loveless. But you might argue to me, but I love my spouse or I love my partner or my girlfriend or my boyfriend. Family, that's true. The dictionary tells us that love is an intense feeling or a deep of deep affection. And this is the worldly definition of love. So by saying you love your partner or you love your spouse, you're right. You love them according to the world standards. But as Christians, we aren't called to live according to the world standards. We call to live to God's standards. And what does the biblical definition of love sound like? Do we love the people in a godly sense? The Bible defines love as this. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, God is love. That's the biblical definition of what love is. Therefore, if we want to love people in a godly manner, we need to come to God first. We need to fall in love with God first. So perhaps you're born a, now a born-again Christian. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've responded in an altar call. Does that mean that you're all of a sudden no longer part of the loveless generation? No, family. It doesn't. Of course not. I've seen many people who proclaim to be Christians, yet the lifestyle that they live portrays the complete opposite of that which they say. You see, family, being a Christian isn't a little thing that you can go and tick in a box on a questionnaire where it says, what is your religious beliefs? No, Christianity is more than just a tick in a box. You see, family, as Christians, we need to walk the walk and talk the talk. We need to behave and act and walk like Christians. Saying that you're Christian and living however you want to is like me saying that I'm an electrical engineer, yet I can't even do something as simple as changing a light bulb. It's a lie. It's a farce. I'm saying I'm something that I'm not really. So in fact, family, 
It is these kinds of Christians who say that they are Christians but live however that they want that has actually chased countless people away from Christianity because they now believe that we're all a bunch of hypocrites saying, you know, we're supposed to be these holy, love-filled people, but then they go and act a different way and it's like, okay, well, you bunch of hypocrites. But it's not true, family. Unfortunately, a couple of rotten apples have given people this impression and consequently chased them away from Christ other people away from Christianity because they're not living godly lives. Am I saying that we have to be perfect? Of course not, family. We're human. We make mistakes. But I am saying that we should strive to live a holy life. We should strive to live according to God's standards. And family, it's actually quite simple to do this. We do this by allowing Christ to live in us and through us. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, that the old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The Bible also tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, this means that anybody who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So family, it is very possible for us to walk in love, in the godly kind of love, not necessarily the worldly kind of love. And it is possible for us to do this by allowing Christ to live in us and through us and to love us and to love people through us, family. It's a decision that we have to make for ourselves to allow him to live in us and love through us. Family, the love of God is always there for us to tap into. The Bible says God is love. It's there. He's there. He's here. He's all around us. But we have to tap into it. We have to choose love. We have to choose to put it on. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 14, Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Family, if everybody had to, in this world had to walk in the love of God, imagine the peace and harmony that would be on earth. But unfortunately, because of our selfish nature and because of our pride, we don't live in the harmony that God has called us to live in if we just live according to Colossians 3 verse 14. So maybe after hearing this, you're all like, well, I don't want to live in this godly kind of love. I'm happy to just love my partner, love my spouse, love my family, whatever. You know, this God kind of love thing, it, it's not for me. It, it just takes up too much time. It takes too much effort and all of that. What I want to say to you, family, is stop being so selfish. We are not called to be selfish, family. We are not called to be loveless. Because remember, selfishness is lovelessness. And I don't want us to walk in that lovelessness. God doesn't want us to walk in that lovelessness. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that without love, we are nothing. Without love, we have accomplished nothing. We can do everything in the world for Jesus. But if we don't do it with his love in us, we've accomplished nothing at the end of the day. Don't be another statistic in the loveless generation. The Bible tells us that if we are to know God, we are to love. 1 John 4 verse 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So what does that mean? If we're not walking in love, family, the God kind of love, we don't truly know God. And this is something that we need to take seriously and something that we need to bring into correction because we confess to be Christians, but do we truly know God and allow his love to manifest through us? We need to make this happen, family. And it's so simple by just allowing Christ to live in us and through us. If we want to live the Christian life, the wonderful, blessed, abundant, prosperous life that God wants us to live as Christians, as children to God, as heirs to the eternal kingdom of God, we need to love family. Jesus even tells us so in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and the demands of all the prophets are based on on these two commandments, family. Think about it. If we love the Lord our God, we're not going to go and worship other idols. And if we love others as we love ourselves, we're not going to want to cheat and steal and kill them because we wouldn't do the same to us, family. So the entire law, the Ten Commandments, is summed up in these two statements. Love the Lord your God 
and love one another. So family, if we want to live the Christian lives, we need to do it. These are the most important commandments. And Jesus even goes a step further than this to actually say that we are not just to love one another, but we are to love our enemies as well. Family, that is how much God wants us to love one another. That is how God loves us as well. And he wants his love to manifest through us. So we need to love our enemies. And it's not difficult, family. It's quite possible because of Christ living in us and through us as born-again Christians. So why does God expect this of us? Why does he expect us to love with so much intensity, with so much supernatural? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not physically possible for humans in our fleshly nature to love like this, but it is possible for God because all things are possible through Christ who strengthens us and he's living on the inside of us as born-again Christians and allowing us to love people like he loves them. You see, family, God has designed us to love. He has wired us for love. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, that God created man in his own image. In the likeness of God, he created them, male and female. So therefore, if we are created in his likeness and image, we are to portray him. We are to portray the character of God. And how do we find out what the character of God is? By reading our Bible. But more importantly, a nice point to highlight the character of God is the fruit of the Spirit. And that can be found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. And the fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit and the character of God. And family, what is number one on that list? It is love. We have already established that God is love. Therefore, if God is love and we are created in his likeness and image, we are created to be love and to demonstrate love. Not the kind of love feelings that we feel for our friends and our family and our partners. No, the God kind of love. So what is the God kind of love, family? We can see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7, where the Bible says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Family, I want to encourage you to go and read that portion of scripture again on your own in your own Bible and read it and confess it and replace the word love firstly with God. So go and say, God is love. God is patient. God is kind. God is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude and so on. And then once you've done that, family, I want you to go and read it again and confess over yourself and put your name in there. So Matthew is love. Matthew is patient. Matthew is kind. Matthew is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Confess that over yourselves, family, because life and death lie in the power of the tongue. There is so much power in the words that we say. So confess love over yourselves to walk in that love. Confess life over your love and over your life. In Jesus' name. This is the love character that God wants us to walk in and the love character that he wants us to show to others, family. This is the kind of love that we are called to walk in and to demonstrate to the world around us. And it's not as difficult as you think, family. As we've already established, if we just allow Christ to live in us and through us, it is very, very possible. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5 in the B section, For we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our heart with his love. The Holy Spirit in us fills us. And according to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he empowers us and equips us to be witnesses, to spread and share the love of God with the lost and dying world around us, family. The Bible also says in 1 John 4, verse 17a, and as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So the more holy life we live, the more we live in God, in his presence, in his word, under his anointing in church and by praising and worshiping him at our, on our own at home or in our cars, by living in God, his love is made more perfect inside of our hearts family. So that is how we can grow our love. So it is very possible for us to love the way that God has called us to love. 
We just have to allow him to do it, family. It's as simple as that. We have to choose, make the decision to clothe ourselves in God's love so that we can love others as we love ourselves. Let us not allow Valentine's Day to become a celebration of the worldly kind of love, to become a celebration of lust and lost relationships. But let's make Valentine's Day a celebration of the love of God. And not just Valentine's Day, family. Let's celebrate the love of God each and every day because he loved us so much to send his one and only son to die for us so that we can have everlasting life. He loves us, family. So let's celebrate love today and every other day. So on the subject of Valentine's Day, I want to say maybe you're single today. I want to say this. Don't allow the selfless, loveless pressures of society to make you feel bad about being single. It's okay to be single. It's sometimes good to be single because in the period of singleness, God can grow us and shape us and mold us and develop our character for us to be the right person that we need to be for Mr. or Mrs. Right to come our way. You see, we mustn't always pray for God to send Mr. or Mrs. Right our way. We should rather pray for God to make us Mr. or Mrs. Right for our Mr. and Mrs. Right. It's not all about God providing the person. It's also about our character. You see, family, God is more interested in our character development than he is in our comfort because he knows that when he develops our character to the right place, we will be able to be faithful stewards with the blessings that he gives us. If he gives us our spouse at the wrong time when our character isn't developed, we could end up breaking up with that spouse and missing our destiny together with that person because our character wasn't in the right place. So celebrate in your period of singleness and allow God to shape you and mold you to be the person that you need to be. You don't need somebody else to complete you. God created you in his likeness and image. You are complete on your own. So don't rely on somebody else to complete you. Rely on God to complete you and to make you perfect and complete to be the person that he's created you to be, to be the husband or the wife that he's created you to be one day. Maybe on this Valentine's Day, you're already in a relationship. I want to say this. Don't allow the selfless, loveless pressures of society to pressure you into temptation and sexual sin, family. If you truly love and respect the partner that you would, you won't want to cause them to sin. Just think about that for a second. That sin that you are doing could cost them their eternity in heaven. If you truly love them, you will not put that on their heads. If you deliberately want to cause them to sin, you are acting selflessly and lovelessly, family. You are selfless and loveless. And that's not the kind of relationship that we're called to be in. That is not a godly relationship. You do not respect that person. So I want to encourage you, make the decision today to walk a holy path with your partner. You see, family, they deserve better than that sin. And you deserve better than that sin too. We are all God's precious children and we deserve better. Protecting each other's sexual integrity is the highest form of respect that we can show to one another. Just think about that for a second. It's something that my friend said a couple of weeks back that has stuck with me ever since. Protecting one another's sexual integrity is the highest form of respect that we can show one another. You see, family, God has designed sex for the confinement of marriage. And he's done this for a reason, because he knows best. Family, go and watch one of my recent videos, God Knows Best, to learn more about this. I'm not going to get into much detail about that now. But God knows best. If he's told us not to do something, he's done it for a reason. You see, family, love, passion, and sexual desire are like a fire. And fire isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fire can be a good thing if it's constrained in the right place, if it's contained within the right space. Think about it like this. If a fire is in a fireplace or in a braai or confined within a gas stove or something like that, it can be used for many things. It can be used for warmth. It can be used to cook food and all sorts of various things this fire can be used for. In a steam engine, the fire was used to heat up the water to propel the steam en train engine forward. Fire can be useful for many things when it's contained within the right space. And it is the same for our sexual desires, family. 
So when we contain, contain our sexual desires in the right place, it can become very useful. But think about it like this. When a fire is let loose and let to its own, it can spread and become a wildfire and cause much destruction. And the same thing can happen for us, family. If we allow our passion and our sexual desires to run free and to not be in the right constraint of marriage, it can literally destroy our lives. And I'm not just talking about us maybe getting HIV and passing away from AIDS. There's many ways that it can destroy our lives, family. This fire that is in us, this passion, the sexual desire that's in us is designed to be kept in the constraints of marriage so that it can be useful and beneficial. So keep your fire constrained in your pants until it can be constrained in marriage, family. So maybe you're watching this video today and you're already married. I want to say this, don't allow the selfish loveless pressures of society to pressurize you into thinking that your spouse is your personal slave or that it's okay to treat your personal spouse harshly or an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Don't let society pressurize you into thinking it's okay to get divorced. Family, it's not. We are called to love our spouses selflessly as God loves us. Marriage is an earthly demonstration of the marriage between Christ and the church. So we need to respect and honor marriage, family. Don't allow the pressures of this world and the things of this world to enter into the marriage and ruin it, family. Choose to love and respect your spouse every day. It's a decision. Like we have to clothe ourselves with, with love, we need to make the decision to clothe ourselves with love for our spouse, family. Celebrate your spouse. Don't just knock them and criticize them and treat them harshly and speak to them harshly all the time. Celebrate them. Celebrate their strengths. Celebrate their successes. Even celebrate their weaknesses sometimes that God will be able to develop that weakness and propel them into their destiny. Use today as an opportunity to demonstrate your love to your spouse. Do something for them today that is selfless. Something that they will appreciate and enjoy. Something that is a self sacrifice in order to make your spouse happy. Happy wife, happy life. And the same goes for husband. Happy husband, happy life. I know it doesn't rhyme, but it still works, family. And how do we make them happy? By acting selfless, by acting in the love of God and walking in the love of God and demonstrating the love of God to our spouse. Don't allow the flame to burn out in your marriage due to selfishness, but make the decision today to love your spouse selflessly. Wake up every morning and choose to love your spouse. Choose to care for them. Think of something each and every day that you can do that is selfless, that your spouse will enjoy. And I'm not preaching this from a perfect space. I've only been married for seven months to this day, and I'm not perfect. My marriage isn't perfect, but God is growing me. God is growing my wife, and God is perfecting us as the best we can be. It is something that I pray every day. Lord, help us to love one another more. Love, help us to love one another the way that you love us. Help us to demonstrate our, your love to one another. Help us to be the couple that you've created us to be, family. I want to encourage you to pray that. Choose to love your spouse every day. Choose to do good to your spouse every day. And like I said, I'm preaching this message to myself as well. And you know what? I'm going to do something today that's selfless for my spouse that I know that she will love and appreciate. I want to encourage you to do the same, family. Don't allow the fire in your marriage to burn out. God has put you and your spouse together for a reason. Don't allow silly little things and don't allow selfishness to keep you away from being the couple that God has created you to be. The devil specifically targets marriages because he knows that where there is unity, God commands a double blessing and he wants to do everything that he can to stop there from being unity in your marriage. Make the decision today, family, to love your partner selflessly. Above all, family, let's choose today and every other day to celebrate the love of God and to be demonstrators of the love of God. Because family, when we demonstrate God's love, it brings the lost and dying world around us, the loveless world around us into the kingdom of God because it is the goodness of God. It is the love of God that brings people to repentance, that brings people to God. And you can go and watch more about this in my recent video, Demonstration Nation. Family, 
I hope that this message has been a blessing to you. And if it has been a blessing to you, I would like to encourage you to please go and share it with your friends and family so that they too may be blessed and encouraged by this message. I know that there are many single people, there are many couples, there are many married couples out there that need to hear this kind of message, that need to understand the love of God, that we are not called to be loveless, but that we're called to walk in the love of God. So bless them by sharing this message. You never know the kind of impact a message like this can have on someone's life just by simply sharing it on Facebook. And I'd like to encourage you to join us again next week as we'll be sharing more exciting and encouraging shorter than this messages. And don't forget at this at the end of this clip to please give us a thumbs up, give us a like, drop us a comment. Let me know what you think about what I've spoken about in this message. Maybe you've got some questions. I'd love to answer them. And don't forget at the end of this video to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you, family. Enjoy the rest of your Valentine's Day and God bless. Yeah, 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 yeah.